Здравствуйте! And welcome to the second part of the military tutorial. Part 1 covered creating and commanding squads, and this part will cover equipping them. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, this video is useless to you, so go watch it. I'll wait. Okay, now that you know how to get your dwarves into your military, you're going to need to know how to get them outfitted for combat. As you saw in the first part, which you've definitely watched, right? Right. There are uniforms to pick from by default. They're alright, I guess. But this isn't the easy tutorial. Let's dig deep into uniforms now and see just how much we can do and how we do it. Once again, we open the military menu with M. Remembering that the military menu is actually a bunch of submenus, we take note of two more of them. Equipment and uniforms. Let's clarify the difference here and now. The Equipment submenu is where you can assign uniforms to your dwarves and check exactly what they have equipped. The Uniforms submenu is just for making and editing uniforms, which are then assigned in Equipment. So the two go hand in hand, you just have to remember not to accidentally mix them up in your head how I do despite hundreds of hours in the game. Before we equip anything, let's visit the Uniforms submenu by pressing N, and see just what comprises a uniform and how we can define our own. Just like all the military submenus, there's a top section with our hotkeys and a middle section where we can make selections. In the uniform submenu, the top section is quite intimidating, but it's actually very simple. It's just presented in a very hard to digest kind of way. Let's break it down so it makes sense. The top row of hotkeys are the fundamental add, delete, and name options. You can create as many uniforms as you want with C, you can delete the selected uniform with D, carefully because it doesn't prompt you, it just deletes it instantly, and you can name the selected uniform with Shift N. The second row of hotkeys is for changing what category of items appears in the selection column here. You'll notice that currently armor is highlighted in blue and that the selection column lists options for the torso of a dwarf. The blue option is the currently active one. And if we press Shift L, then we see that legs become the active option, and the selection column now displays lower body choices. We'll cover all of these as we make a new uniform. The third row is for getting more specific with the items we added to a uniform, and we'll touch on that in a moment. For now, let's make a new uniform to get everything we've learned so far committed to memory. Pressing C immediately creates a new uniform with a generic name. We'll rename it with N. Now we have a new uniform, but it's empty. For a quick overview of the middle section, note that the Uniforms column lists all of our uniforms, the Items column shows what is currently part of the uniform, and the Selection column is not part of the uniform, but just a list of choices for adding things. With the new uniform selected, in the Items column we have no items. Let's add a new item by first pressing Shift A to show torso options, then pressing the right arrow key to move to the selection column, and then selecting armor by pressing enter. Now armor is an item in this uniform. A dwarf assigned to wear this uniform will automatically equip any kind of armor for their torso. That's not much of a uniform though, so let's add a few more items. We'll press shift L to show leg options. Now we'll move down to leggings and add those as well. Leggings are not necessarily good armor in combat, but they can be if they're made of metal. I imagine that metal leggings are chainmail. We can specify metal leggings, but first let's complete our item list. We're also going to add greaves, because you're not limited to one option per category. Though leggings and greaves can't be worn together, a dwarf assigned this uniform will pick which one they want to wear for themselves. Now we'll press Shift H and select Helms, then Shift G to select Gauntlets, Shift B to select High Boots and Low Boots, Shift S to select Shields slash Bucklers, and finally Shift W to select a weapon. Weapons are obviously an important consideration, and the weapon your dwarf has equipped is what they will train with as well as fight. The default uniform includes individual choice weapons, but let's specify battle axes for this uniform. Now our uniform is a little more fleshed out. A dwarf assigned to wear this uniform will at least attempt to completely outfit themselves, though we haven't helped them make good choices over bad ones when it comes to exactly which items to pick. Let's get more specific by finally visiting that third row of hotkeys up top. 
By the way, to remove an item from a uniform, highlight the item in the Items column and press Enter. We can have the Selection column display materials by pressing Shift-M. This is a modifier that is applied to the highlighted item in the Items column. Let's highlight the Armor item and then go to the Metal material and press Enter. Now the uniform specifies Metal Armor, but not a specific kind of metal. As you can see, many specific choices are available, including leather from every species that you might obtain leather from, if you wish to be so specific. There's also some kinds of metal that I don't even know exactly what applies inside of them. For example, pale metal, which I believe is platinum or some other metals. Comment below if you can find the exact list of metals and other materials that qualify in these vague categories. Pressing Shift-C changes the selection column to colors. One practical way to use a color specification is in order to equip bone armor. Bone is not a material option for some reason, so you can specify white color without a material. And if bone armor is the only white armor you have, then your dwarves will equip that. Now let's explore some logic that these options allow for. First, we allowed for leggings as an alternative to greaves. Some leggings are not good for combat though, so we'll specify metal here to make sure that the dwarves are wearing either metal leggings or any kind of greaves. Another thing we'll do is select a specific metal for the battle axe because soft metals are not going to cut it. See what I did there? We may not want to limit ourselves to only steel battle axes though, in case we don't have quite enough steel for that. But sometimes a fort collects weapons of inferior metals and we also don't want dwarves picking up a copper battle axe. So we can add another entry for battle axe and specify another metal we have lying around or already have in battle axe form that isn't so bad, like bismuth bronze for example. As far as what you should choose for your uniforms and the ideal materials, that's an extensive and information dense subject that would greatly lengthen this video. So for that, I refer you to the wiki with just one quick tip here. Steel is the best material obtained without great risk. Iron and bronze are good and roughly equivalent to each other in a general sense. Copper and silver suck where sharpness or hardness is needed, such as sharp weapons or armor. Copper can be used for crossbows because it doesn't really matter, and it's halfway decent as bolts too. Copper armor is certainly better than nothing and better than leather, but it's only going to reliably protect against unarmed attacks like biting or punching. Silver makes a damn good bludgeoning weapon, but it might as well be beeswax when it comes to sharp weapons or armor. Now only two more options remain here. Pressing R changes whether or not this whole uniform replaces clothing or is worn over it. To avoid some bugginess with dwarves not wearing their uniform because of clothes they already have on, it's safest to set this to replace clothing. You can add regular clothing items to the uniform if you'd like your dwarves to still wear underwear while fighting, but dwarves don't care as long as they're wearing something, and the armor fulfills that need on its own. The last option is M for exact matches or partial matches. This affects the entire uniform as well. Partial matches means that if a dwarf can't find an item that technically qualifies for the uniform, such as metal leggings, they will settle for something close, perhaps leather leggings. I personally always do exact matches, as I always make sure to produce and manage a stock of military equipment so that I know they will find what they need. And finally, we're done with making uniforms. The uniform I made here was picked out to show different options at strategic points in my explanation. It is not a very good uniform. I recommend you don't copy this, or even use it as inspiration, but instead, start by making basically a default uniform, but with specific materials and weapons, as that's an easy way to make something actually good and sensible. You can get more complicated as you get more familiar with things. You can also just modify the default uniform, which I will do now to add a sweet grizzly bear leather cloak to up the badass factor of my squads. We'll move on to the equipment submenu now by pressing E. To make sure we are good and confused, the top section of the equipment submenu looks a lot like the uniform submenu, but the function here is different. Here we actually assign equipment to our squads or individual positions. When view slash customize is selected with V, the second and third rows of hotkeys are the same as they were in uniforms. 
That's because we can draw up a uniform here as well, just like we did in the uniform submenu. It works the same, but here the uniform is changed for just one position, and it isn't named or saved, so it's much more tedious. Though it can be useful to make a change to just one position's uniform. For example, if you want the only steel armor set to be worn by the squad captain, while the rest of the positions follow the standard uniform. To demonstrate, I'll select the first position, or captain, of the wonky bonkers, delete the individual choice melee assignment by highlighting it and pressing enter, and then use Shift W to add a whip to the captain's uniform. I'll highlight the whip and press Shift M to specify silver as the material. Now the captain specifically has a modified uniform that wields a fancy silver whip. He's the only bonker who won't be bonking, but rather slonking his enemies. We can also highlight the second position and remove shoes from its uniform, because everybody knows that second in command don't need no shoes. Note that these uniforms aren't for a specific dwarf, but the squad position. I can change uniforms for positions that aren't filled, and if the captain dwarf were swapped with the second position dwarf, the new captain would have the captain uniform, and the old captain would have no shoes. One very cool option we have here is for assigning exact items to a position. Let's press Shift W again and see that the first option has become Specific Weapon. When selected, it brings up a list of every weapon we have, and we can assign a specific one. This is very useful for giving artifact weapons to the dwarves that deserve them. Now let's make things even more difficult. In the top section of the Equipment submenu, the top row of hotkeys for View slash Customize, Assign Uniforms, and Pre slash Assignments work kind of like these other hotkeys in that you select one to be active, and that changes the options you have available. In this case, each one changes the other hotkeys in the top section, effectively creating sub-submenus. I know, right? Anyway, let's press Shift U to select Assign Uniforms and see that we can now use our defined uniforms from before. You'll notice first that the Position Uniform column now shows the uniforms that have been predefined, including our new one. You'll also notice that only two hotkeys exist up top for making changes. You can highlight a squad, then a position, and then a uniform you want to assign, and press Enter to assign that uniform to that position. This completely overrides the current uniform, already making the process much faster than editing the uniform again and again for each position. To make things even easier, you can press Shift-Enter to assign that uniform to the entire squad. This is the primary workflow for assigning uniforms. First, draw up the uniform in the Uniform submenu, then come to the Equipment submenu and select Assign Uniforms, and then use Shift-Enter to apply the predefined uniform to the squad. Finally, make specific edits where needed. You'll notice the green indicator here. That shows what the highlighted position is currently assigned to where. If I navigate down to the third position of the Wonky Bonkers, you see that it is assigned the default Metal Armor Uniform. So is every other position, except for the first two, because those were modified in the View slash Customize options. Remember that selecting a predefined uniform overwrites the current assignments for that position, so do this first, and then go make your changes. Finally, there's Shift P for Priority slash Assignments. Here you can change the priority with which your squads claim available equipment, as well as see exactly what each dwarf has claimed. The squad list indicates which squads get first, second, etc. pick of available gear, with first pick on top. To reorder the squads, press Enter to select one, then use the arrow keys to move down to the spot you want to place it in, and press Enter again. On the right, you can find the exact items that your individual dwarves have claimed. Though they don't necessarily have it equipped right now, they probably do unless something is stopping them. And that's it for getting your dwarves suited up and ready for a fight. I thought about including training dwarves in this video as well, but that would necessitate also covering scheduling, and that's just too much work for a guy with a day job. The next part will cover those subjects, to get your dwarves truly prepared for some epic tragedy uh, battles. So get some squads set up and ready while you wait, and I'll see you in the next one.